attached and detached products are allowed here and that the project meets all code requirements. Staff finds the applicant's proposal meets the PAD zoning code, design principles, and applicable design standards. I really do um, want to thank particularly Kyle Packer and, and Mr. Laws um, for really taking a close look at it after the neighborhood meeting, getting on the phone with us, trying to see what we could come up with proposals. Um, we could certainly, between the Planning Commission and Mayor and Council, if you desired, kind of take a look at that with staff and see if we could widen them a little bit and still meet all the code. Our biggest concern is we need to make sure that we are code compliant um, as, we, as we move it forward. Um, but we've been able to do a few of those dances with staff, so. We had staff uh, draft, draft up a condition. The draft condition is uh, driveways for lots 14 through 17 are to be widened and or the distance to the rear property line shall be reduced to the minimum setback to better accommodate a standard vehicle. I'd rather be a little more explicit, I think, about what we want. Um, and then we'd just like also to remind the commission that the the current parking configuration does meet the multifamily residential parking requirement. Um, so, you know, it's staff's preference with, again, the draft condition that we recommended that we not put quite as much of a, a concise cap on it, um, knowing that we've got those two or three different things we're trying to balance and can absolutely commit to work with the applicant to try and get as much um, parking space outside of the sidewalk corridor, if you will, as possible. It meets code right now, period. But the design in front of you meets code. And so I think the motion needs to reflect that. It's not going to meet code with the condition. The condition is going beyond code requirements. And